Okay, hello and welcome to the OTB channel. Not one of my usual videos with the intro and everything else. This is just a quick midweek how-to. Uh, and it's based on some of the things that I've been uh, playing with this week. And I thought it might well be worth putting a video up showing you how to recompile Slackware packages to add additional features or in fact to remove features that you perhaps don't need. Um, what's triggered this, uh, for those of you who've been following my videos this week or the last few weeks, is I've been playing around with Fluxbox and um, the demo I did was on my Arch Linux system and I attempted to replicate it on my Slackware boxes. And I found that when I tried to generate a menu with uh, icons, unfortunately, I wasn't able to on Slackware. And the reason being, Slackware's Flux, Flux box does not have uh, support for IMLib2 compiled in. And there's no reason it should. It doesn't have the IMLib2 package on the system. However, it's a really pretty easy process to actually get it working. So I thought I'd just take you through that process now. So first and foremost, let me open a terminal. Um, I'm going to install the IMLib2 package uh, from Slack Builds. I do have SBO tools installed, so... It's a simple process. I'm just going to log in as root and do an SBO install, imlib2. Asks me if I want to proceed. Yes, I do, please. Am I sure? Yes, I'm sure. And off it goes to the repo. It's getting imlib2 and it will build it and it will install it for me. Okay, so I just paused that for a minute, but that's imlib2 now installed. So what we need to do now is create a, a Fluxbox package for Slackware that does support that library. So let me first of all create a, a builder environment. So make directory minus p. Let's do a build directory followed by a Fluxbox directory. Okay, all good, and I'm going to CD into that build directory and then that Fluxbox directory. So I'm now ready to start building. My first point of call is going to be slackware.uk. You don't have to go to slackware.uk. Use whatever mirror you want, um, but I'm just going to show you how to do this because it's my preferred repo. I'm going to go down to the Slackware directory. Then I'm going to move to Slackware 6415. Then to the source directory. And I'm going to move into the XAP directory or XApps, which uh, is where I know Fluxbox is uh, actually there. And you'll see there's a directory called Fluxbox. And if I open it up, you'll see that amongst other things, we have a Slack build there. So I'm just going to copy that URL and I'll make this just a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing. So if I zoom in here and just clean this up a little bit, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use LFTP to uh, mirror the contents of that directory. So let me see if I can remember the syntax it's LFTP minus, oops, minus C, open speech marks, open, followed by the URL, then a semicolon, mirror, minus C, minus E, and close the speech marks. So we're waiting for that to happen. And if I do an LS, you can see now that, uh, all the contents of that directory have been downloaded. If I do an LS LA, you'll see, in fact, that the Fluxbox Slack build does not currently have executable uh, permissions. So I might as well change that now. So chmod plus x Fluxbox Slack build. 
And there we go. That now has executable permissions. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to go into the script itself. So let's use Nano. And I'm going to open up the uh, Fluxbox Slack build. So first things first, uh, I've opened up Pat's uh, Slack build here, and I'm just going to make a few changes. Firstly, under the, the build uh, item, I'm going to create a new item called tag. I'm doing this uh, for a couple of reasons, the main one being that I tag all of my custom packages and it uh, allows me to very easily blacklist them. Uh, but secondly, it just distinguishes it from uh, uh, Pat's standard Slack build. So uh, I'm just going to make sure I get this correct. Uh, so it's curly brackets, uh, tag, colon, dash, and I'm going to call it underscore OTB. And we've got curly brackets to close it. So there's the tag uh, distinguished and identified. I'm then going to move to the end of the file where we get to the make package section. And I'm just going to add that tag immediately after build. So it shows up. Right, the next section that we need to go to is where we have the compile flags. And you can see enables Cinerama, enables Slit, enable NLS, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let's just go from enables Xinorama, Zinorama, and I'm going to create a new section that says enable im lib2. There we go. So that's all I need to do to enable support for imlib2. What I do want to do, however, I want to disable support for the slit. I want to disable support for the toolbar. And I also want to disable support for the system tray. Let me just make sure that that's the syntax that I need. Yes, that's all I need. So, so I'm just looking at that. I've added support, support for imlib2. I've disabled support for the slit, the toolbar, and the system tray. Let's save that and come out of it. And uh, now run that build script. And we will come back once it's built. Right, so that just took a few minutes. Uh, Fluxbox uh, isn't a big package, so it hasn't taken a long time. Let's just clear that up. And what we want to do now is to use upgrade package to install that new package that's been created, which is now in the TMP directory. So I use upgrade package. Um, install new, reinstall, and I want to go to the TMP directory, and I want to use Fluxbox. And there we go. And you can see OTB, that tag, is now onto the end of that. So I'll click on that. It's removing the old Fluxbox, Fluxbox package, and it's installing my new one. So let's go and see if that's worked. So here I am uh, now at Fluxbox. It's still very vanilla, and obviously we've just got the basic terminal in there. Um, there is no bar. You can see it's all been taken away, but let's just open up a terminal and make this full screen. And let's type FB menu gen, which I have installed from uh, Slack Bills. Let's use the I flag. A new menu has been successfully generated, it tells me. Let's have a look. And you can already see 
support for IM Lib 2 has worked and we now have a whole range of icons there. So that gives you your foundation upon which to work. And by the magic of video, this is how it can, uh, or what we can turn it into within a couple of minutes. And a short while later, here is what we have. Something nicely themed with polybar and uh, a menu with icons. Right, that's it for today, guys. Just a quick how-to. Hope you enjoyed it. See you at the weekend.